Hello and welcome back everybody. We're at DreamHack Anaheim. It's Tiger Lily, your host here, along with beautiful Kevin. He is going to be gaming again, so his hand is away from the mic, but I'd like to introduce you today to a new dev. If you'd like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your game and you as well afterwards. Uh, yeah, my name is Justin Renard. Uh, my company is Secret Cow Level, and we're developing Doom Trooper, which is a collectible card game that was a physical card game in the 90s, and we tracked down uh, the owners, and we are trying to bring it back digitally now in 2020. Awesome. And then your name? Uh, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. So Chris is going to be down there with Kevin, and they're going to just be playing the game. He, he will do his best to lead through, and we're going to talk a lot about it as they progress and go into it. So Kevin, if you wanted to start. So if you want to kind of briefly yeah. explain what he's doing. So they're getting ready to boot up a game. They're going to choose a deck. Ooh, I like the art already. We're trying to keep, so the game was uh, popular in the 90s, so we're trying to keep that 90s feel where we can. So we went a little retro with a lot of the UI, as well as the uh, versus screen you just saw, it like smacks in from the side, uh, like a fighting game would, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat 3 kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, just to harken back to the uh, glory days of retro. A little pixelated art there. I can see, there's like the little fusion of styles in this. Yeah, I, uh, I really love pixel art, so we wanted to work it in somewhere, so we have it in a couple little loading screens and stuff, but we're keeping the game, uh, the game has a wealth of painted art that yeah, we're trying to focus on. It's a on. mesh, it's a mesh of what we know and what's familiar, but it's also new, like, um, I don't really, really see this kind of deck table or like anything like that, so it's new to me. Yeah, it's, uh, we're, the good thing about our game is that it doesn't have any wizards or dragons or uh, <gasps> any like no. tropes you would expect from most collectible card games, because a lot of them are, for better or worse, Hearthstone. Already seen it. Yeah. This is different. This is new. Yeah. What inspired, um, I, I answered my own question, because this is inspired off of the old game back in the 90s. Correct. That's correct, correct yeah. Uh, the, the art is very, like, um, the art is very focused in a time period when you yeah. look at it. The big muscles and the giant guns. And unfortunately, there were a lot of damsels in distress, oh. you know, late 80s, early 90s when the art was painted. Uh, but we're trying not to focus so much on those for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, but the big dudes with the big muscles. We're going to try to do some, some girls with big muscles and some little skinny dudes in distress to try <laughs> to counteract uh, the time difference between then and now. Yeah. So with this, how long in production, like how far along in development is this game? Uh, so this is actually our fourth year, uh, longer than we thought it was going to take, but I'm kind of crazy and decided to make my own uh, engine and technology and tools to make this game okay. the best that I could. So it's your own, which yes. is a good way to start because it, it's your own. You don't I have to mean, worry about anything. It is, but we would have been done a long time ago had I not done that. Yeah. Uh, but we have the ability to patch the game a lot faster than other card games, to update it, to support multiple platforms, because we designed the engine to make a cross-platform card game. So with this, with this one specifically, what are you trying? What's your goal with your community? When someone picks this game up and they want to play it, like what are you hoping that they receive in return when they first go that into is, it? That is a great question because. I want them to see the love and the passion because when we started this game, there was Hearthstone. Yeah. Now, four years later, I could, if I started listing all the card games, we would go over time. Uh, I, want, I don't want people to see this and think, oh, another cash grab. I want them to know I played this game almost 20 years ago. I loved it. I collected it. I tracked it down. I'm reviving it. I love it. I want them to love it. And when they do give us money, I mean, the game will be free to play. Uh, but I want them to want to give us money because they see how much we love it and how much of ourselves we're putting into of it. Course. Not ever feel ha like they have I, to. I, don't, I think that's why you taking time to make this game and have your own engine and put in, in, it, in your own little mix into it is really good because although it took so long people are going to see that i hope so and uh we have a really great discord community and a lot of them are just as passionate about the game as we are some of them played it back then some of metasec conventions like dreamhack yeah. and i want everyone just to know how cool this game was and give it a shot so how many uh, what platforms this is just on pc so our uh, original version of the engine we made will run on pc it'll run on apple uh and it'll run on linux okay. uh, and linux is not a lot of gaming but yeah. there are a lot of diehards out there and that's part of what we're trying to do to show people like we we yeah, care that's your community that's who you're trying to grab you yeah. want anybody on linux to have a good time. i want anyone anywhere uh it's just ios and android we are starting to prototype a little bit right now and yeah. hopefully if things go well with some revenue or publishing we can have a uh, mobile out by the end of the oh, year yeah, i could definitely see this being fun so 
So can you ta talk about what they're doing on screen right now? Kind of explain, because he's over there explaining to Kevin, but for me, I'm not sure what they're doing, what his goal is. I don't know if you can recognize the strat here. Sure. So the, the game that they're playing right now, uh, they're playing the Mishima faction on the bottom. It's kind of based on like Japanese culture with samurais and assassins and uh, some magical sword powers and stuff. Yeah. And then the other guys are playing the Dark Legion. Uh, Algaroth is the uh, Dark Apostle's name. Uh, they're more like zombie horde. So the strategy for the AI is a horde strategy. Okay. Uh, this guy in the middle is a necromutant. He will make all of the little guys more powerful. And the little guys will make each other more powerful. So Do they multiply? Is this a multiply deck too? Or is it no? The, well, the uh, little guys have a keyword called unlimited right now. Yeah. Don't know if it'll stick around for final, but you can have as many of those in the deck as you want. Wow. So they kind of multiply themselves. And there's another guy that could come out. His stats are based on how many of the little guys you have. Right. So if this gets out of hand, it gets out of hand really quickly. Okay, so for our on our side, as we are fighting against the enemy, what would be the best way to take it out? Because like they're gonna keep he's gonna keep making them stronger every right. round, I bet, and then attack. So the real strategy is just not to let the horde grow. Yeah. Uh, the guy on the right is a really great attacker. He just brought him out of cover. Uh, cover is kind of like hiding. You can't attack, but you uh, have a higher armor stat, so you're safer. Yeah. The guy on the right is probably going to be his attacker. Uh, and he, the, the middle guy on the opponent is currently wounded. That's why he's flashing red. Uh, when you attack somebody, there are no hit points. They have armor and you have your attack. Okay. And you choose whether you want to fight or shoot, two different stats. Um, it's, it, it sounds complicated, but it's really it's simpler than it sounds. Uh, you, as soon as you get it down, it's just a learning curve. For me, for example, like I not, but I'm very interested because I want to know what they're doing. Like, right. Uh, and I like the way that the, the the animations work. For example, like you can tell that little glitch. It's just like this one is selected. I like that instead of it getting highlighted because that's what you usually see, right? Right. So when you when you attack, if you do more damage than their armor, you will wound them, yeah. and then they'll flash red and glitch out, showing that they're wounded. If you wound them again, they'll die, and you earn their points. But you can only attack once per turn, which is very different than games, say, like Hearthstone or Magic, where you load the board up and then just attack a whole bunch as an over yeah. overwhelming force. It, yeah. Traditionally, you're only going to attack once unless certain cards, certain strategies allow you to attack more than once. But that's a super powerful ability. So talk about, a little bit about this character, the bot, the artificial, the AI that he's fighting against. Um, Every, every enemy is a deck, right? That's how these games work. How many do you have like at the moment as you progress? Like, Is there only one for the demo, or do you have more? So the game itself has uh, seven factions at launch, which is kind of another me being a little crazy. It's yeah, a lot. I mean, there, a lot. There are five good corporations in the world. There are also five evil Dark Legion apostles. Uh, we managed to get the five corporations in and one Dark Apostle. The rest will require us, it turns out, uh, based on the old cards, to design a lot of new cards to flesh it out. Yeah. So we'll do that later as the game progresses. And then there is um, another faction, which are, you could say the wizards of the world. They're kind of a neutral faction that live on the good side of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, they're super powerful, and in the lore, their job is just to take out the, the Dark Legion. Okay. So you, you do have that like hierarchy of like, oh, I made this achievement. I have done this. So that, yeah. that's always fun. Um, it gains you a little respect in the community. So further speaking with this game, if anyone was interested or wanted to support you, is there how would they be able to find you? Like you just went over the platforms, but like you, you, you talked about Discord as well and then right. any socials? Uh, yeah, so our website is doomtroopergame.com and all of our social is doomtroopergame. Uh, so you'll be able to find it anywhere. We are getting ready to move over to Steam Early Access because anyone who wants to play, we want them to come in. The game is stable. We're adding cards all the time. And if you want to try it, we want to get you in. Yeah, and you want that feedback. So, And then if you're here at DreamHack Anaheim and you want to go give this game a test, you can find them in the, the indie playground. Do you know your booth number? No one ever does. But you can find <laughs> them, I'm sure. I believe, yeah, 506. 506. So if you're a dream at Anaheim and you want, you want to test out this game, I love the art side. It's very unique and obviously very passionate about it. I would, I would go talk to him about it if you're into this. So thank you so much for showing the yeah. game today. Thank you for letting me. Of